All right, welcome back. We are now ready to move into our unit seven notes. Let's move into solving and graphing linear inequalities. When we look at graphing or solving linear inequalities, the first thing I want to know is we should definitely review those inequality symbols. So our first symbol is less than. If you're ever confused and you're like, shoot, is that greater than, is that less than? I want you to consider, doesn't that look like an L? It does. So there's your less than. If ever you're concerned, there's your L, there's your less than. So if this is not your L, right, this is backwards, this is going to be greater than. Here we have less than or equal to, and finally we have greater than or equal to. When solving linear inequalities, we are going to follow the same rules for solving equations, except there's going to be one major exception. That exception is when we divide or multiply by a negative number. If we multiply or divide by a negative number, we must flip the direction of the inequality symbol. And these are our inequality symbols. So for instance, let's say that I had negative 4m is less than 12. We want to solve for m. So think of this as negative 4 times m, and the opposite of multiply is to divide. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 4. Now, because I am dividing by a negative 4, as you see here, I'm going to circle it. I'm dividing by a negative 4. That means we also need to flip the direction of the inequality symbol. So let's simplify. Negative 4m divided by negative 4 is simply a positive m. We have to flip the direction of the inequality symbol. So it goes from less than to greater than. And then 12 divided by negative 4 is a negative 3. You may want to re-watch this part of the video just so that you understand what's happening. If we multiply or divide by a negative, that is when we will flip the direction of the inequality symbol. Okay. For each of the problems moving forward, we are going to first solve it. Then we're going to graph on a number line. Then we're going to express our answer in set builder notation. I'll show you what I mean when we get there. And then we're going to express our answer in interval notation. Again, I'll show you what I mean when I get there. So first, I have this reference table for you to have and for you to look at as we move through the notes. I will show you each of these pieces as we move through. So the first thing I want you to consider is if you have 3 times 2b minus 4, minus 16 is greater than 32, I know that you all would instinctively say, I need to distribute to drop parentheses. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We are going to distribute to drop parentheses. 3 times 2b is 6b. 3 times a negative 4 is a negative 12. And then we bring down the minus 16, the greater than the 32. Next, we're going to combine like terms. And negative 12 and a negative 16 gives us a negative 28. So 6b minus 28 is greater than 32. Next, I'm focused on solving for b, but negative 28 and 32, these are both like terms. So I want to bring the 28 over to the 32. So I'm going to add 28 to both sides. When I do that, I get 6b is greater than 60. Last but not least, I would like to solve for b, so I'm going to divide both sides by 6. Notice I'm dividing by a positive 6, so we do not have to flip the direction of the inequality symbol. 6b divided by 6 leaves us with b. The greater than symbol stays exactly the same. And then 60 divided by 6 is 10. So according to the instructions, we are going to solve first, which we did. Here's the solution. Okay? This is the solution. Next, I want to graph this on a number line. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a number line here. And because my critical value is 10, this is the only value we're focused on, I don't want to put 0 right smack in the middle of my number line. I don't want to write 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's just silly. Visualize shifting the number line so that the middle is now 10. 
Notice here we have B is greater than 10. So let's think about what this statement means. If you had the statement B is greater than 10, and I said to you what numbers would satisfy that, you would say 11, 12, 13, 14, etc. So then I would ask you, well, can B also be 10? And you would say no, because 10 is not greater than 10. So you cannot include 10 in that answer. It has to be a number greater than 10. It could be 10.1. It could be 10.2. could be 10.3. As long as it's not also equal to 10, then any of those numbers that are greater than 10 will satisfy this. So when we think about graphing on a number line, we have to consider, is this an open or a closed circle? Are we including the value or are we excluding the value? Because B is greater than 10, you cannot include 10 in the answer because 10 is not greater than 10. So in this case, it would be an open circle. Let me show you. B is greater than 10, so we can't include 10 in our answer. And go to our reference table. Notice that we have greater than is going to be an open circle. Open circle implies we can't include the value itself, but we can approach it. So 10.1 could be an answer, 10.2, 10.3, all the way as far right as we possibly can go. So when we shade, this is what it should look like. All the numbers greater than 10 will satisfy this interval. B is greater than 10. And that's what my drawing here on my number line looks like. All the numbers greater than 10. So this is part B, our answer on a number line. Next, what I'd like to do is I'd like to express my answer in set builder notation. So take a look at this spot right inside our reference table. Set builder notation has the same format every single time. You'll have a brace. You'll have whatever variable you have in your problem. So if it's, a, if it's an X, it's an X. If it's a B, it's a B. And then you'll draw your vertical bar. These three pieces will always stay the same. Brace, variable, bar. And then the cool thing is whatever your solution is, that's what's going to go inside this piece right here. So where it says X has property P, Essentially, what that means is your solution will go right here. And then, of course, you close it with a brace. So I'm going to put set builder notation right below our solution so that you can see how straightforward this is. So we're going to have set builder. So for set builder, we're going to start with a brace. My variable in this case is a B. So I'm going to write brace B vertical bar. Always brace, variable, vertical bar. Now my answer is B is greater than 10. So I'm going to write that right here and then I'm going to close the brace. My answer expressed in set builder form is as follows. Word for word what this states is the set of all elements B such that B is greater than 10. I'm going to say that one more time. The set of all elements B such that B is greater than 10. If you ever have a point where, let's say, you're at home and you aren't able to rewatch the video, I've actually included an overview of our Unit 7 notes. So if you turn to the very last two pages of your notes, you have an overview. So notice here in this section of set builder notation general form, I've written an example of set builder and I've written out what that actually means. The set of all elements Y such that Y is greater than negative two. Okay, so you have this overview here in case you need it. So we've written our answer in set builder notation. This, so this is part C. And now I want to express my answer in interval notation. So interval notation is actually pretty cool. Uh, Monique, I'm not sure what your question means. We will have 
an opportunity to have a review session on all the things that we're covering. But you'll always have your notes with you and you always have the videos to review if you needed it. Okay. So now we want to look at interval notation. Notice what I have here in the reference table. So in terms of interval notation, you always want to consider what's your lower bound and what's your upper bound, right? So let's think about this logically. What if I were to ask you all, what is the interval of grades that you have to get in order to earn an A in this class? And you would say 90 to 100, right? 90 being the lowest and 100 being the highest. The video, Monique, will always be available. This is not going to go away. So you'll have it. So if, I, if you were to say that the range of grades that you could get in order to earn an A in the class are 90 to 100, then your lower bound would be a 90 and your upper bound would be a 100. And when you think about those values, you would include them, right? If you earned a 90, you can get an A. If you earned a 91, you'd get an A. If you earned a 92, you'd get an A. All the way up to and including 100. What I wouldn't do is say that in order to earn an A, you would get anywhere from a 100 to a 90. That's backwards. We want to make sure that we're representing our interval in the correct order. You would not say 100 to 90. You would say 90 to 100. So order definitely matters even when we express our answer in interval notation. So I'm going to show you what it looks like to take that number line, the visual that we have, and turn that into an interval notation as our, as our solution. Okay, take a look. So notice here that the interval that we have shaded in sits between a 10 and when we see this arrow here, we have to think about what that means. What this arrow implies is that we're going to continue and continue and continue and continue. And you're probably thinking, well, how big does it get? Well, if you think of continuing as high a number as you possibly can, you're essentially approaching positive infinity, right? So when we think of writing our interval notation, we know that the lower bound is here at 10. See, it's here at 10. And if we follow this, we have an arrow, which means the upper bound is as high as infinity. If writing infinity is weird to you, simply draw two circles side by side. Or turn the page, draw an 8, and then put the page back upright. Okay, whatever it works, whatever works for you. Next, I want you to notice that we have an open circle here. So open circle refers to open parentheses. Open, 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 soft, okay? So open parentheses here. Now, infinity would also be open as well. The reason is that when you close, when you use brackets or you close it, you're essentially saying infinity, you end here. Well, unfortunately, we know that infinity doesn't end. We're going to continue on towards positive infinity without seeing a final result. There is no end to infinity. So we cannot close it by using a bracket. So we're going to approach infinity using parentheses. And this represents interval notation. Interval notation. And we're done. That's part D. Again, as a reminder, use the interval that you've drawn. Notice your lower bound is the 10 and the upper bound refers to infinity. So we have 10, infinity, left, right, and then open, open, and infinity will always be open. Let's look at another example. Negative 7m plus 2m minus 15 is greater than or equal to 26 over 2. So, piece by piece. We're first going to combine like terms. And negative 7m plus 2m gives me a negative 5m. We have minus 15 is greater than or equal to, and I'm hopeful that when you see 26 over 2, you think 26 divided by 2. And that's going to give you 13. 
let's continue solving this. We're going to bring the 15 over. So add 15 to both sides. That gives us negative 5m is greater than or equal to 28. And then finally, we want to solve for m. We want m isolated, so we're going to divide both sides by negative 5. As a reminder, because we are dividing by a negative 5, we must also flip the direction of the inequality symbol. Notice I've circled these to illustrate that we have to pay attention when we divide by a negative. So negative 5m divided by negative 5 leaves you with just an m. We must flip the direction of the inequality symbol, so now we have less than or equal to. And then 28 divided by negative 5 leaves us with the fraction negative 28 fifths. If we could reduce this fraction, we would, but I do not want decimal answers. I would like you to leave your answers in fraction form as long as it's reduced. Great. So here's part A of the directions we had on the previous page, which was to solve. So there is our solution. Next, I want to graph this on a number line. My critical value is a negative 28 fifths, so I'm going to make that the very center of my number line. Again, there's no reason to make the center of our number line zero, especially when we're just going to shift it over so that we have negative 28 fifths as the center. Notice our solution. M is less than or equal to negative 28 over 5. Because it says less than or equal to, that means we are going to include the negative 28 fifths. So or equal to means you're including it. Equal to include. We use a solid circle. You have that on your reference table on the previous page if you would like to reference that once more. But because we have m is less than or equal to negative 28 fifths, we are including the negative 28 fifths. Now, m is less than negative 28 fifths, which implies all of the values to the left. So we're going to shade to the left. Less than, left. Greater than, right. Less than, left. There's our answer graphed on a number line. Next, we want to express our answer in set builder notation. So according to our setup for set builder notation, we know that we are going to use a brace. The variable in this case is m. Then we have our vertical bar. And now I'm going to express my or I'm going to rewrite my answer inside set builder notation. So we have m is less than or equal to negative 28 fifths, and of course, close it with another brace. And there you have set builder notation. Finally, we also need to express our answer in interval notation. Interval notation is left bound, right bound, lower bound, upper bound. So take a look at our drawing here. This is going to be incredibly helpful. The left bound here implies that we're going to continue going to the left. This arrow implies we're going to continue to the left. But what does that mean? If I continue to the left, what am I approaching? Well, on the flip side, when we continue to the right, we approach positive infinity. So similarly, if we continue to the left, we're going to approach negative infinity. So the lower bound here is a negative infinity. So we have our left, and now we have our right. Our right bound, or our upper bound, is a negative 28 fifths. We already had the discussion, excellent Brittany, we already had the discussion that we cannot close infinity. So we're actually going to put a parenthesis around negative infinity to say that we're approaching it, but we can't close it. We cannot say negative infinity, you end here, right? It doesn't work that way. But then notice that we have a closed circle on the negative 28 fifths. So I want you to think closed circle, closed bracket. Close the door. Okay? Closed, close it. So that means you're including the negative 28 fifths in our answer. 
So when it says m is less than or equal to negative 28 fifths, you can say a possible answer is negative 28 fifths. Okay? And there is your interval notation. And we're done. Let's do it again. Number three. We have 41 is greater than negative 17 times p plus 3 minus 4 times p plus 2. So the first thing we're going to notice is that if we want to solve, we definitely want to distribute to drop parentheses. So we're going to go ahead and distribute to drop parentheses. Notice we have two sets of parentheses. They each have a coefficient in front. So the negative 17 gets distributed inside this first set because it says start here and end here. And then the negative 4 is going to be distributed into the second set because it says start here and end here. So let's do the math. We have 41 is greater than negative 17 times p is negative 17p. Negative 17 times 3, if you take a moment to punch that in or to do that math, you'll find that it is minus 51. Then negative 4 times p, notice I said negative 4 times p. It's not just a 4. There's a sign in front of it. Negative 4 times p is a negative 4p. And then negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. At this point, we want to clean up all of our terms. So if we have any pairs of like terms, we're going to combine them. So we have 41 is greater than. Notice I have a negative 17p and another negative 4p. When I combine these two, negative 17 and another negative 4, I get a negative 21. Be careful with how you combine like terms. So we get a negative 21p. Then I have a negative 51 and a negative 8. When I combine these two, I get a negative 59. Next, I'm trying to solve, so I'm going to bring the 59 over to the 41. So let's add 59 to both sides. 41 plus 59 gives me 100. Is greater than negative 21p. Next, I'm going to isolate p by dividing both sides by negative 21. Those cancel. And notice that because I divided by a negative, I must flip the direction of the inequality symbol. So 100 over negative 21, we actually cannot reduce that. So we're going to leave this as negative 100 over 21. We're going to flip the direction of the inequality symbol, and we're going to bring down the P. There's my solution. Next, I'm going to graph this on a number line. Again, my critical value is a negative 100 over 21, so I'm going to put that in the middle of my number line. Okay, now here's the interesting part. Let's read this out loud. Negative 100 over 21 is less than P. If negative 100 over 21 is less than P, then doesn't that imply that P is greater than negative 100 over 21. If P is greater than negative 100 over 21, we're going to have open circle because we do not have the equal to. If we had the equal to, it would be a solid circle. We do not have the equal to, so it's an open circle. And since this reads that P is greater than negative 100 over 21, we're going to shade to the right because all of the values to the right will be greater than that number. Left is less right is greater. Left is less than, right is greater than. It's so important for you to read exactly what this says and to think about what it means. If a negative 100 over 21 is smaller than p, then that means p is bigger than negative 100 over 21. So it must be shaded to the right. Next, because I have my number line here, I'd actually like to write my interval notation at this point. So with interval notation, recall that we have to focus on the left and the right bound. So left, right, left, right. My left 
is a negative 100 over 21. Open circle, open parentheses. And if I continue to the right, notice this arrow means continue towards positive infinity. And we're also going to approach infinity. We cannot close it. We cannot put any brackets because there are no closed circles. I hope you guys are noticing that the only time we'll ever use a bracket is if we have a closed circle. That is the only time we will use a bracket. Closed circle, close the door. Closed circle, bracket. Equal to bracket. Finally, we also need to write our answer in set builder notation. We always use braces to denote a set. So that's why it's so important that we have braces in set builder. Also think a set of braces, right? A set of braces. When we as kids or teens or adults decide that, you know, maybe we need to straighten our teeth, we'll get a set of braces. Typically, we get a set of braces. So think of our braces in set builder notation. Our variable is P. Then we have our vertical bar. So the set of all elements P such that, and now you could just take your answer here and write it right inside. So we will write down negative 100 over 21 is less than P. And voila. We're done. This problem is complete. I want to do one more with you since we have five minutes left. I want to introduce you to what it looks like when you have a compound inequality. So what I'd like you to do at this point is put your pens or pencils down and just observe. You'll have a moment to write this down afterwards, but I want to show you exactly what's happening here. So pens and pencils down, just observe. For number four, we have negative 10 is less than 12v minus three divided by two is less than or equal to eight. That is very interesting. This is a compound inequality because we have two inequalities in this one particular um, expression. I want you to notice that way back in unit two, when we had equations that had fractions, we always multiplied by the LCD so that way we can eliminate fractions. In this case, notice that 12v minus 3 is all divided by 2. So if I wanted to eliminate the divided by 2, I would actually multiply every term by a positive 2, just like we've done in unit 2. 2 times a negative 10 is a negative 20. Bring down your less than symbol. Notice the two and the two, they cancel. So these are going to eliminate each other. Okay, they eliminate each other. And that leaves us with 12b minus three is less than or equal to, and then eight times two is 16. Next, our focus is to solve for b. So if I were to, for instance, cover that up, and if you saw 12b minus 3 is less than or equal to 16, you would say, oh, I've got to bring the 3 over to the 16 so that I could solve for b. And I would say, yeah, that's totally true. Now, what if I covered that side? Now we have negative 20 is less than 12b minus 3. And you would say, oh, no big deal. I bring the 3 over because I'm trying to solve for b. Do you notice that in either case, we're going to add the 3? So since we are solving two inequalities at the same time, we're going to literally add three to both sides simultaneously. So we're bringing three away from the center, away from the B term, so that way we can solve for B. That gives me negative 17 is less than 12B, which is less than or equal to 19. These cancel. Again, my goal is to solve for B. I'm gonna make a note here. The goal is to isolate the variable. That's very important that you remember the goal is to isolate the variable. So if I wanna solve for B, I've gotta divide by 12. And remember, we learned that when we multiply or divide, we must do the same thing to every single term. We must multiply or divide every term by the same quantity. 
This leaves me with an answer of negative 17 over 12 is less than B, which is less than or equal to 19 twelfths. Next, I'm going to graph on a number line. This time I have two critical values, so I'm simply going to express, or I'm simply going to write that the negative 17 over 12 is here, and the 19 over 12 is here. It is reasonable to expect that the negative 17 twelfths is to the left of a 19 twelfths. Think of this as a number line. Your negative values are definitely going to be to the left of the right uh, of the positive values, with zero being somewhere in the middle. Notice negative 17 over 12 is less than B, which means we will have an open circle here. But B is less than or equal to 19 twelfths. So less than or equal to. Equal to means you're going to include the value. B is greater than negative 17 twelfths, but B is smaller than 19 twelfths. So if B is greater than negative 17 twelfths, but smaller than 19 twelfths, our solution is somewhere in between. Next, I'm going to write my answer in interval notation. Interval notation is always your left followed by your right. So the left value is a negative 17 twelfths. Notice that we have an open circle, so we have parentheses, open circle, we approach, soft, open, round, right? Our upper bound is 19 twelfths. And because it's a closed circle here, we are going to close the door. So my interval notation looks like so. And our very last piece before our class is over is set builder notation. We're going to have a set of braces. Ooh, sorry, that looked really bad. Here's my set of braces. My variable is B, put the vertical line, and then simply take your entire answer and rewrite it here. So negative 17 twelfths is less than B, which is less than or equal to 19 twelfths. And you're done. All right, everyone. I will see you all on Thursday. Bye.